Hey, photo world, welcome back to another episode here on TakingTalkPics.com. This is another episode from the former podcast. Please subscribe, hit that notification bell, and join the email list. Let's get to that 1,000 subscriber marker so that way I can add a new video every single week. Enjoy. Hey photo world, take and talkpics.com. This is episode 44 with commercial photographer Jeffrey Ross. Hey photo world, today's featured guest is Jeffrey Ross. Jeffrey, are you ready to rock today? Yeah, you bet. Awesome. Jeffrey is a commercial photographer based out of Naperville, Illinois. Together with his wife, Catherine, they own Ross Creative Works. They combine Jeffrey's photography with Catherine's design work to create powerful imagery, marketing, and advertising materials for their clients throughout the country. Jeffrey, welcome to Take and Talk Picks. Hey, it's good to be here, let me tell you. So I've barely scratched the surface, and just the little research I've uh, done about the two of you and what you're doing with your business and the little bit I know about you, but could you introduce yourself further to Photo World and tell us what you got going on? Yeah, sure. Uh, my name is Jeffrey Ross. I've been a uh, commercial freelance photographer for uh, 16, 17 years now, I guess. And it's been great. It's a lot of fun. I get to travel all over the world, get to see lots of cool things. Um, I, I mainly do uh, corporate work, a lot of um, advertising, marketing, uh, commercial photography. And it's great. I have some great clients, uh, great connections, great relationships with those people. And then uh, my wife and I uh, combined efforts about a year and a half ago. She's a graphic designer. She worked in the commercial world. And I think she uh, she saw my life and got a little envious. And, uh, <laughs> and we started working together. And I tell you what, it's the best thing. There should be some sort of dating service uh, between uh, photographers and graphic designers because she makes all of my photography make sense. You know, she, she can put it in, in ways and arrangements and uh, puts it together in a way that it, it, it just suddenly looks a, a different way than I could ever envision it. And it's fantastic to see what she does with my work. She puts all of our marketing materials together and, uh, and has a big master plan. Me? I, I take pictures of things. I have no idea how to, to put things together. I have no idea what goes together and what to do with it. So I'm you're, glad that you're uh, good at putting we, it in a frame. You know, that's your thing. <laughs> I have. I, I always said I have. I have tons of amazing photos just leaning up against the wall in the house. I have no idea what to do with them or where <laughs> they go. But uh, she makes she makes it all make sense, which is awesome. That is awesome, and I, I think that's uh, that's a good idea. I think you got a million dollar idea there to start a new uh, dating service for the online yep. community out there. You know, right. yep. <laughs> so photo world, work. it's it's coming. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. yeah, awesome. Hey, photographers, go get yourself a graphic designer. Go start dating a graphic designer. That's that's the key to success, right there. That's the first question when you're going to talk to somebody. Just just ask them what they're doing for a living, and yep. if it doesn't make that cut, yep. walk away. Yeah, I'm sorry, pal. Oh, oh. you're an investment banker. This is not going to work out. <laughs> Awesome. Well, we're all about telling stories and I love that you're sharing it already with us and, and how you, you know, got your business going with your wife in the past year and a half or so. Um, but yeah. before we get that story in order, do you have a, a good line for us, a little mantra or a quote that you live by or run your business by that kind of helps you day to day? Uh, I, you know, I, I have a bunch of little things I think I say to myself as I'm, as I'm going along and, <laughs> Uh, one of them is just, come on, just get the job done. Just figure out what it is you need to do, get it done. You know, uh, in fact, I gave a lecture at a college once and it was just called get the job done. Stop coming up with excuses on why this isn't going to happen. Right. One of the other things, uh, and I am stealing this from a, a documentary I saw about a guy who was an amazing dude uh, during world war two. Um, if it's not impossible, there must be a way to do it. Is it impossible? What? No, it's not impossible. Well then figure out how to do it. Right. Go do it. You know, uh, there, you need to be a little bit fearless sometimes, and and I'm not always the best at that because when you have, you know, kids and a mortgage and all that other stuff, you have a lot of things in your head you worry about, and right, right. you need to have a little bit of just daring and tenacity and. Oh, come on. Let's get this done. Let's make this happen. Well, and I so. think that's the way of a, a freelancer world is you know there's there's some stability in what we're doing, but it's not a steady paycheck. You know, so no. we have to be a little bit fearless and just go for it. 
you yeah. have to you have to always hustle. Yeah. I mean, nobody is going to come up to you and say, "You're amazing." I'm going to give you this great photography job. I mean, that does happen occasionally. But, right. Uh, for the most part, you are are your marketing person. You are your face of your business. You've got to get out there and hustle. Come on. There's times I'm tired. Uh, there's some event I was going to go to because I know that somebody I wanted to meet is there, a business contact. And you're just tired at the end of the day. And you're just like, come on, you got to do this. Get right. up. Let's go. Let's get moving. We, you you are your business, and nobody else is going to make this happen for you. Yeah, and I think we get that little warped view when we're uh, in classes for it, or we're picking up the camera and self taught, mm -hmm. whatever it is. Like you know, oh, I'm I'm pretty good, or your friends or fam family tell you you're good, and then all of yep. a sudden you think the phone's going to start ringing, and that's not yeah. how it goes. <laughs> you know, that's something else I've uh, I've told uh, students before, especially college students, because yes, they do get a little bit of that. I said, okay. You are, you're the rock star of your little, you know, developing lab at the college or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, get in line. Everybody's, <laughs> you know, everybody's a great rock star of their own little world. Uh, it's when you get out there and start to, you have to promote yourself. Nobody cares if you were the best, uh, you know, at, at developing, you know, in the lab. Nobody cares. You've right. got to get out there and sell yourself. You need to be out there uh, showing everyone how good you are. It takes a lot of legwork when you're starting a business. It's a lot different now, that's for sure. Yeah, and thinking back to when you first started, uh, you said like 16 years ago with your photography, yeah. what sparked your interest enough to pick up a camera and, and pursue it as a career? Okay, that seems like it was a whole other person. <laughs> but uh, I was I was a stay-at-home dad, believe it or not. Uh, this was a whole marriage ago. Mm -hmm. um, I was a stay-at-home dad, and I... I'd done a number of different things, uh, and photography was always a hobby. It was always something I really enjoyed doing. Um, as I was with the kids, I would start picking up little jobs, uh, just doing headshots, doing different things. And as the kids got older and I had more free time, I was picking up more work. Mm -hmm. The work was getting better, bigger jobs. I started, you know, looking you know, past just doing, you know, a couple portraits for some friends of mine or some band photos. And I started thinking about it as a possible career. And so I wouldn't recommend everyone do it this way, but it was a great slow way to transition into something. You know, yeah. it was, uh, it was, you know, it, it not like I need to be a photographer tomorrow, you know, or okay, I've graduated. I need to do, you know, I was kind of self-taught. I took some, uh, classes at the community college, uh, but I was traveling a lot, um, with my family, uh, and, with the camera. So the t camera was always something portable that I could take with me. And, and, uh, it was, it was a good way to do that. That that's what got me going. And when I was going through a divorce, I needed to figure out what I was going to do with my life. And I got a lot of bad advice about how to take it easy, how to be careful. You know, why don't you get a teaching job? Uh, I was actually, I have, you know, degree for, uh, teaching. I have a degree in philosophy and humanities, nothing to do with photography. <laughs> and, uh, I didn't want to do that. And I was good at photography. And it was a big gamble. It was a big risk to say, you know what? I really enjoy this. I'm very good at it. I have no idea if this is a career or I can make money at this. I think I can. I'm going to give it a shot. Uh, no one wanted me to do that. I, everyone said that is a terrible idea. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm glad I, you know, at that moment I was going through one of those cathartic uh, awakening experiences and I really wanted to give it a shot. And I'm glad I did. Yeah. And I think uh, we get a lot of pros out there that tell newer photographers, like, you got to remember this is a business you're starting rather than yep. the ability to go out and take pictures. Yeah. And then people like when you were starting it out or deciding, OK, I'm going to I'm going to try this and, and see if I can do this. It's a big risk. And, and most people yep. don't have what it takes. But I think just from the beginning of this conversation where you're like, you got to get out there, you got to do it, you got to push. Yeah. I think you've had that mentality the entire time that you've been making those and it's only been developing in your favor. I had a natural ability to, uh, number one, know what I was not good at, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, and seek out help in those areas. And number two, I'm, I'm good at putting myself in the right place. You know, I don't have a business background. I don't have business skills, and, or I didn't. And uh, I was at least smart enough to know where I needed to be. Right. And I, I, right off the bat early on, just 
looked around and knew where I needed to be, you know, talked about, you know, it was the right place at the right time. I could kind of see where the right place was. And I put myself there and I knew the right time was going to come. That's a good way of looking at it. You know, it's not all just luck. It's kind of some strategy and, you know, taking that with you. Your luck is something you can acquire. I got to say, it's something you can just, if you keep putting yourself in the right spot, those lucky things will happen. So on the flip side of that, we have uh, the fun parts of business where things don't go well. You know, yeah. the, the failure moments, the learning moments. Can you recall a time, a story uh, where it just didn't work out the way it was planned and you're better for it now? Yeah, you know, I've got two. I've got I've got a big one and a small one. The big one was what any photographer that's been around for a while will tell you. And that was the economic downturn in uh, 2007, mm-hmm. 8, whatever that was. Yeah. Oh, oh, man, that was an eye opening experience. <laughs> uh, because, like I said before, uh uh, there are many things I am not good at, and there's nothing that holds a a flashlight up to your face and shows you what those are. Like all of a sudden, uh, you know, business just disappearing. I mean, I I had people go out of business owing me money. Mm-hmm. I had uh, I, I I had one client that was at the time a third of my business. I was shooting for a publisher that makes a lot of travel magazines and stuff like that for different communities. All of a sudden, they said, you know what? Business is bad. We are going to start using just stock photography, and maybe we'll get some college kids to shoot some stuff. No. And I'm on the phone with them, doing the numbers. As I stopped listening to what they were saying, and I'm like, I just lost a third of my business. What am I going to replace that with during a time when everybody was going out of business? Right. Uh, it, was, it was a time when a lot of photographers who didn't have what it took went away. There was a lot of people who were just kind of floating. Business right. was pretty easy before that. Uh, people were dropping left and right. Mm-hmm. When that was happening, I did a very smart thing. And again, that goes back to knowing what you're not good at. I was not good at running a business. I was doing it, but I had no background in it. I had no skills in it. And I very wisely uh, invested in myself and my business at a time when I was losing a ton of money. I said, okay, here's the thing. If I'm going to make this work, I've got to get tight. I've got to get smart. I've got to get better at what I'm doing. I need to be better at this this thing. I can't just let this go away. I, this is a photography business. I need to have some business skills. I took a sales training class with uh, Sandler Solutions. I, I cannot talk more highly about them. They changed everything I did. Every day I was there, I learned something about how to run a business, how to talk to people on the phone, how to send out an estimate, how to do an invoice how to communicate in a way that it was going to make me uh, get better jobs for bigger budgets. And as I was progressing through that, all the little things I learned made me so much smarter. And as all these other photographers were going out of business, I started getting better clients. And this is during the 2008. All of a sudden, I got some great uh, clients and big projects. And I'm like, okay, this actually works. I need to really believe in this and do this. So getting some business smarts really helped. Yeah. And there was another time uh, I did a big project for uh, um, the Smithsonian photographing uh, the space shuttle down in Florida. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I did that for like three, four years. But there was one day I flew down there and I blew it. (laughs) Okay. And this is not one of those things you want to blow. I, I flew down to Florida and made it over to, um, you have to get a badge to get in to go to NASA. There's like 20 levels of, or 20 steps in the approval process. And I got to the badging office after the badging office closed. I didn't realize it closed at 4. I went and got some food, went over there. It was a late night thing, something that happened at 10 p.m. Get to the badging office, it's closed. They, it's a government-run uh, facility. So they say they close at 4, they close at 4. And I, I missed out on this incredible opportunity. They're rolling the shuttle out to the launch pad for the last time. And I screwed up because I didn't check the details. Mm-hmm. And I went with uh, the other photographer with, that was with me that we both missed out on getting our badges. And we, we might have had a few drinks and <laughs> cursed a lot. And uh, I said, you know what? There's another opportunity the next morning. You got to get up and finish this. You got to see if you. So I got up. Like five in the morning, went out there. I was standing at the badging office at, you know, 530 in the morning, just waiting to be the first person in the door, grabbed the badge and ran out there and just made it uh, to this thing in time. And I got one of the best photos I've ever taken in my life as the space shuttle was sitting on the launch pad. 
and these clouds came behind it and the sun, the morning sunrise was hitting it at the perfect time. So I had one of the best photos I've ever taken after one of the most disappointing evenings I've ever had professionally. And, and that goes back to you can't just let it overwhelm you. You can't right. drop the ball. I had, I had a very disappointing thing. The next morning, you got to forget about it. You got to get up and go and fix this and do the right thing. So, you know, that's more of a little, you know, lesson that I learned, uh, you know, in the, the blink of an eye one night. But little now, but it was huge then. And huge. Just, that was I mean, it all so it relates to what you were saying, though. And I think that's really important that uh, it didn't just come from uh, something you've researched. It's you've lived it. You've lived the, the thought of. Okay, we missed that. What's next? I got to go. I got to do this. What can I yeah, do with it? You don't complain about, oh, this happened to me and that happened to me. Things happen. They happen to everybody. Right. What are you going to do to get the job done even when those things happen? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And we have a wide range of photographers listening. Jeffrey, could you please share with Photo World one thing you think would lead to growth and success in a photography business regardless of their current level? Well, sure. First, hi, Photo World. How you doing? <laughs> uh one of the best things I think you can do, no matter what your level, and it's something I always remind myself that I need to keep doing, even when I'm busy, even you know if I think it's going to be redundant or irrelevant, uh, you need to always be networking. You need to always be growing. You need to always surround yourself with good people that, that you can lean on or go to and ask questions You know, if you have a problem. I have a great network of people that I've I've gotten to know over the years who are now friends you know not just business you know acquaintances but a, a very diverse group of people you know just lawyers business people uh, the print shops everything where if I have a problem or a need or something you know terrible just happen I can quickly go to them and and get some help and uh and that's great and networking is good uh, no matter what you're trying to do, whether it is that personal stuff that you you need a, some help with something yeah. or if it's business. I mean, I've, I've gotten jobs at some of the craziest, not crazy, but just most, uh, strange situations. You're like, well, I'm just going to go volunteer and help out at this thing. And I ended up getting some huge job, uh, out of somebody I sat next to at this volunteer thing. You know, they happen to be the the marketing director or something or other, and they were, you know, volunteering their time too. And, and we started talking. So get out there, network, um, surround yourself with good people because you will need those people at, at some point. Sorry. Right. And you, the networking always helps. Even if you're just getting out there to do some volunteer work, uh, get out there and, and do it. It's good for you. Even if you don't meet anybody, get out there and do it. If you don't meet anybody that first night, don't say, oh, this isn't going to work. Keep getting out there because you never know what's going to happen. Right. I mean, we all get stuck on our computers every once in a while. And so many newer photographers or even intermediate photographers are at the point where they're like, oh, I'll put it out on Facebook or, you know, I'll tweet yeah. about it and that'll do something. And it can. There, there are modes of possibility, yeah. but it's not the answer. I mean, in the end, no matter what industry you're in of photography, what genre you photograph, it's always people based. You know, you yeah. could be doing landscapes, but you don't get published without people involved. So, you know, it's always people based and you got to get that networking down. Yeah. You need to get out there and actually shake hands with people. Right. I, I do get some work that's kind of random, you know, hey, we found your name or hey, we did right. this or just saw your photos. Most of it, though, comes from just meeting people, seeing them, talking to them and right. getting, to, you know, people like working with who they know. So I try to be the person everybody knows. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, it just makes sense. I work with people that I know. If I have, if my car breaks down, I'm going to go to the mechanic. I know, you know, right. if I need uh, something uh, fixed, I'm going to go to the person I know or ask somebody that I know. And that's just how it is. And that goes to the networking. You know, the, the more I'm out and the more people see me, uh, even if they don't hire me, they might recommend me to somebody. So, right. And that's these moments of, uh, you know, 2008 and the big crash there and, you know, thinking, Hey, you know what? I need to invest my business and, and take some business savvy classes here and learn a little bit more about it. And mm -hmm. then the idea of missing that opportunity down in Florida and saying, you know what? I'm going to just go ahead and do it the next morning and see what I can do. These little light bulb moments, these times where we make that decision, these aha moments. Can you recall mm -hmm. another time where something like that happened? And once you made that change, once you made that decision, things started to turn for the better. Uh, 
Man, you know, there's probably one million of them in my life. <laughs> yeah. No kidding. Uh, a lot of it was uh, one thing that really helped me was when I figured out that, you know, I need to always be shooting for something better, uh, whether that is better clients or or bigger projects. Um, I think it's so different now starting out a business than when I started. I mean, I think a lot of those early jobs that we, that I had, that I think a lot of photographers had back in the day of, you know, I'm going to do this little project. It's going to be just enough money to buy a, a lens or, you know, do this or buy a printer. I think a lot of those jobs are gone. I mean, a lot, everybody thinks they're a photographer now. We hear that a lot. Right. But that they, they can only do that up to a certain point. You know, and if you're always fighting to be the cheapest person, you know, or the lowest bidder, you're going to lose every time. Right. You know, uh, you, you really need to value your work. You need to make sure that you're getting paid what you need to be paid to, to have a life, to afford groceries, you know, to pay the mortgage. And I think when I figured out, you know what, I can't always be fighting. And this was early. I figured this out. Thank goodness. You know, I can't always be fighting for these dumb little jobs to be the lowest bidder. It, it, it never works. And that's when I started saying, OK, let's look at what else is out there and let's look at bigger businesses. Let's look at bigger projects and then letting those projects marketing myself towards even bigger projects and, and bigger things. And always you, you always have to be selling yourself, even when you're busy, especially when you're busy, you always have to have marketing. We have uh, a few uh, marketing pieces that we send out. And sometimes it's hard to put them together when you're, you know, I travel overseas a lot and it's hard to always do that. But I'm, I'm sometimes writing articles on planes and, uh, you know, Catherine's doing layouts and sending them to me to, to look at and review and I'll give her my opinion. And sometimes I'm, you know, in Vietnam or in China and we're trying to, you know, piece these marketing pieces together. But if you let if you drop the ball and stop sending stuff out, you know, as soon as you're not busy, you're like, oh, well, whoops, what happened there? You right. Know, I, we should have been, you know, marketing even when we're busy. So when that those big projects have stopped, you know, there's something else lined up after that. Yeah. I think I think I rambled through three pieces of advice there and pushed it into one. But hey, yeah, that's that's what we do here, you know. Just cram okay. as much value into this thing as we can, right? And uh, get it out there to photo world. So yeah. that's awesome. And speaking of value and advice and good things to pass along, can you recall the best advice you have ever received with your photography business? Best piece of advice I ever received. You know, it might go back to one of the first things I I ever heard, and, it, and again, it, it kind of inspired this, you know, value yourself. And I heard that from different people, but there was one old grizzled photographer. And I, I have no idea who it is. And he's a travel around the world uh, with different universities and document their archeological digs. And then he'd also photograph in the areas and sell the prints. Um, and he, he cursed a lot. So I won't say exactly what he said, but he, he, he said something like, he said, if you're good at what you do and you're not, making enough money he goes raise your price I'm like you know and I remember writing that down you know he's like if you're if he's if your stuff isn't selling raise your price he goes nobody wants to buy a $50 thing but if it's if it's worth a thousand dollars well that must be worth something you know all of a sudden it has a value you know right um and if it's the same picture valued two different ways people are like oh I don't want that oh look at this thousand dollar thing that must be worth something Right. Uh, suddenly there's a perceived value on this thing that is the exact same thing. You just change the price on it a little bit. And that sparked my thoughts on making sure I'm I'm valuing what I do and working with people that can appreciate it and afford it. How's that? You know, it, it's <laughs> it's finding those clients that can afford to uh, to pay me. <laughs> <laughs> and then finding the projects that I want to do. And, and I, for some reason, that, that one guy really sparked my thoughts on the, whole, uh, on the whole pricing myself and valuing myself. You know, it was when I was first starting out. And when you're first starting out, you're hustling for every dumb little job there is out there. And I said, right. I got to stop doing this. I, I, I would rather do one job for $1,000 than five jobs for $200. And when you're starting off, you know, you're taking every five, you know, every $200 job you can. 
Right, right. Speaking of starting off, I mean, if you had to do it all over again, you still have the same gear and the same knowledge yeah. that you currently have today. Yeah. What would you do first? I'm assuming it'd be different than what you did originally. I know it would be for me. <laughs> it would be slightly. It, yeah. it would be. I'd skip all those dumb little jobs, but I would immediately uh, jump into the networking thing. And mm-hmm. I believe it or not, I've actually thought about this because I hate winter. And here I am, you know, outside Chicago, and w- winter really sucks. So I, I've often thought, okay, what happens if you know we suddenly move to a warmer climate? How do you do that? How do you start over like that? Um, to get new clients, you know, some of my clients I could probably work remotely or, you know, work on projects traveling, but yeah, how do you do that? How do you start over? And a lot of it I think would go right back to networking, figuring out what it is in that area where the businesses are, where the work is, look around to see what it is that, that I do that would be applicable in that area or where the needs are. And then putting myself in that spot again, I think I would do a lot of the exact same things I did when I was starting off. I would just do them on a bigger scale. You know, I'd have marketing pieces ready to go. I'd, I'd be able to get involved quicker in different networking groups and stuff like that. So I think, I think I'd think i do a lot of the same things, actually, uh, which sounds kind of strange. I would just be better at it because I've you know been doing it now for so many years. Yeah, and I think the, the networking thing, making that an early... Uh, development in a career would be a really valuable thing to do because I think, I think I know for myself and I know a lot of other photographers out there who just, that was a big fear of theirs early on yeah. to, to get out yeah. there and, you know, I'm a nobody and I have nothing yeah. to offer, but that's yeah. not true, you know? So just well, also don't tell people that, you right. know, that's, uh, I, there's something else I tell students is don't, uh, don't defeat yourself. You know, I have a lot of students, if I'm doing a portfolio review or something, they'll mm-hmm. be like, Oh, well, this, I wanted to do this one differently. And, oh, you know what? This was just a test. Don't judge that. You know, I want to do this one again, but I'll change the lighting. Stop telling me how bad your photos are. You know, right. uh, don't, don't go out there and tell people how, you know, well, I'm not quite ready. Just shut up. Get out there. <laughs> and, and do and it. Do it. Yes. Just do yeah. it. <laughs> stop, stop being your worst critic and stop. You know, it's good to be your worst critic. Stop telling everybody else all your problems or how you're not the best yet. Just get out there. These people don't know you. They don't know that you could have shot this in different light at a different thing. Just go. Just do right. what I, you need to do. I feel like it. we always want people on our side, and the big mistake is we always put them on our bad side, you know, because we talk yeah. down on ourselves. Right, right. It, it, it's a self-defense mechanism. I get it. You know, you're afraid that people are going to point out, you know, how this isn't right. So you want to point it out first right. so that you can show them, oh, I, I get it. I, I know this isn't perfect. You don't have to tell me. No, don't do that. It, just get out there and get to work. Right. Get to work. Get to work. I love it. Photo world. Hopefully you're there on your way to work or something. Get get doing it. Get to work, people. <laughs> so, Jeffrey, do you have an app or an Internet resource that you think photo world could benefit from knowing about? Uh, doing all the traveling that I do, I use a few uh, apps on the road that are very helpful to me. Uh, they may not be great for every photographer, but uh, Google Translate. Hello. That saved my rear end a couple times. It used to be called, uh, oh, what was it? Word, Word something, and Google bought it, and it's a great thing. You can actually hold your camera up to, like, signs, and it'll translate the, the, the text, like, instantly yeah. when you're looking at it. And then there's a sun surveyor app that I use quite a bit. It uh, tells you when the, the sun is. I mean, I was just over in uh, Italy a couple days ago, and just to be able to plug in your location and figure out where the sunset's going to be when you're scouting some locations in places you've never been before, it was very helpful to figure out, okay, if we come back here tomorrow at 6 o'clock, where's the sun going to be? They aren't photography apps per se, but they help me uh, get the job done. I mean, the translator, again, communication is everything, no matter Mm -hmm. what you're doing. I need to be able to tell people and ask people, you know, what's going on and where I need to be. And the, the sun thing, I, I need to know where the sun is, you know, as a photographer, I need the best light. So I always need to know what's going on. Yeah. I mean, I think they both relate to photography and even more so just the business side of it with the translate thing. So, you know, uh, use it, you know, there's so many possibilities out there. So thank you for sharing those too. Yeah. Um, so can you tell us about a recent, project or an upcoming project that you have in the works that you're kind of excited about? Yes. You know, I, I just, uh, Catherine and I did it together as a personal project. We don't have, boy, I wish we had more time for more personal projects, but, um, 
this one was a lot of fun, and we haven't shown the pictures to anyone yet. We don't quite know what to do with them. We've pitched them to a couple magazines to see if anybody's biting, mm-hmm. and uh, um, somebody will pick something up on it, perhaps. But we were driving home from a, a meeting, and we were on the west side of Chicago driving uh, under the L tracks, heading straight west, and we passed the, the Lion and Healy Harp Factory, and I, you know, it had the sign up there on this old factory. I said, harp factory. I said, you think that's still like a functioning harp factory? You know, harp, musical harps. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and she says, I have no idea. And she ended up contacting the Lion and Healy Harp Factory and said, what do you guys do? We'd love to uh, come take some photos. And we got, uh, they, they agreed to it. And we got to go into the harp factory and it's five floors of the coolest looking stuff you've ever seen. Wow. And, uh, you know, they let us shoot whatever we wanted. And we spent a, a day just documenting, you know, these people. They're like one of the few places left in the world that make concert grand harps. And I've never photographed, you know, any sort of uh, harp factory before. So it was a lot of fun. It was a great experience. A lot of fun. Photos looked great. Don't know what we're going to do with them yet, but uh, it was a great experience. That's cool. And and when you get them out, you know, put it on your blog for wherever they're published and everything yeah, so we can take a look because that, that sounds pretty awesome. Yeah, I usually put all the good stuff on my blog and at some point I'll share them on my blog. I'm, I'm, uh, we want to make sure there's a couple magazines that get first yeah. uh, uh, grabs at them and then I'll, I'll share them later. Yeah, so, give it out to the people paying hard. first. That's for sure. It, yeah, exactly. It's kind of hard. You're like, oh, coolest thing I've done in a long time. Let's not share it with anybody for six months. How's that sound? <laughs> um, I think it, it, I love to do more stuff like that. We... We tried lining up a really fun personal project, too, uh, uh, that we put a lot of time and energy into, and it fell apart, completely fell apart. And those, those are always disappointing. you got to let it go and jump right back in there and see what it is that's going to inspire you and, and find it and get to it. So we're about to wrap things up today here, Jeffrey. But before we go, could you please share with Photo World one parting piece of guidance and then the best way that we can find and follow what you're doing, whether it be your website or some sort of social media? A best piece of advice, uh, especially if you're starting out, is find a good mentor. No joke. I mean, um, that was one of the best things I did was uh, work with, you know, a number of very good photographers. And, you know, you can learn more in a couple of days working with, you know, a photographer that's working in your line of work, then I think you will learn in school. I mean, uh, it doesn't matter if you want to photograph dogs or you want to do concert photography, or if you want to do, you know, corporate advertising, find out who it is in that area that, that is doing what you want to do and, and put yourself right next to that person. I don't care how you do it. Get in touch with them, beg, plead, uh, say you'll mop the floors. Just be there because just having your eyeballs on the scene, you're going to learn so much. You're going to learn how to talk to people on the phone. You're going to learn how to handle clients when they show up. You're going to learn how to uh, call Ford uh, Modeling Agency and, and what the right terminology is for asking for you know certain types of people for certain shoots. You're going to learn about finding props and, and, you know, if you need to get a location scout for something, get yourself uh, an assisting job or a mentor. And I think when you're a more established photographer, it's it's not to keep yourself so insulated. It's still to surround yourself with good, talented people, because a lot of my best friends are still very talented working photographers. And I we still reach out to people if sometimes we have a tricky estimate, you know, for be like, Hey, you did a, a job kind of like this, you know, what did you do with the, with the, you know, guessing for the number of days you needed to do this project? I mean, we, I, I still have people I reach out to and there's people that reach out to me and we bounce ideas and, and handle questions with each other. Don't forget that you're not alone in this. Um, make sure you have people around you that you can reach out to when you need them. Right. Yeah, and then where can we uh, find what you're doing and follow oh, along? Oh, yeah, sure. You know what? Uh, as a photographer, you'd think that I would have figured out Instagram by now, but I'm <laughs> just getting into it. Uh, I kept thinking that that was the one that was going to go away because it seemed like it was so many other things, but apparently it's not going to go away. Uh, you can find us on Instagram. I think it's Ross Ross Creative Works R O S S Creative Works, and we're also on Twitter as Ross Creative Works. 
My personal one on Twitter is uh, Jeffrey Works, J E F F R E Y. I think that's my my thing, Jeffrey Works. And uh, Facebook, we don't really have a business uh, page on Facebook, but if you look me up at Jeffrey Ross, I'm always posting stuff. Uh, I just put up a bunch of good Italy pictures from uh, last week, and and I, I'm going to put that on my blog soon. If you go to, we have two websites. One of them is uh, JeffreyWorks.com. And um, the other one is Ross Creative Works. And uh, you can go to either one of those and see what we're up to. The Ross Creative Works, we're adding some new stuff to. And you can see more of, um, you know, the stuff that Catherine and I do together. And that's, yeah, R-O-S-S, Ross Creative Works. I'm sure I'm somewhere else out there in the Internet universe. <laughs> if you find me out there, say hi. I don't know what to tell you. Well, but, yeah, reach out. I always, you know, look forward to hearing from new people and i always look forward to uh you know meeting new people too it's it's great yeah and uh photo world you know well we'll have all of these links the social media links and the websites where you can find uh jeffrey and his wife and what they're doing with their business on taking talk pics on the show notes page just type jeffrey in the show notes search bar and their show notes pop up so awesome and i, I really like your parting yeah. guidance how you kind of really brought it full circle to just get out there and do it keep networking, yep. you know, it was just, it's so streamlined in the idea of moving forward, you know, don't get hung up on the little stuff, just keep moving forward, photo world, so I really like where we, this whole yeah, topic do was that. going. It, it's something we never forget, Catherine and I, we always have little meetings, and we're like, what do we need to do next, what's next, you know, you always have to have a plan out there, and you yeah. always need to be figuring out where you need to be next, push it, where's the next client going to come from? Exactly. Well, Jeffrey, I cannot thank you enough for your time today and sharing such great value. Photo World thanks you, and happy shooting. Yeah, thanks. Uh, good luck, everybody, and go take some good pictures. There's a lot out there to take pictures of, and, and uh, just get out there and do it. Photo World, our businesses can't grow unless we grow. Take the time and learn a little bit more about your Photoshop, Lightroom, and general photography skills. Kelby One is a great place to start. They have training courses, and today you can get $10 off your first course. Head to TakeAndTalkPics.com to the affiliates page, and we have Kelby One featured right there, where you can get your $10 off your first Kelby One course. Photo World, TakeAndTalkPics.com. Thank you again for joining us today, and we really appreciate you stopping by. Make sure you share this with your friends and photo family out there. We'll see you next time. This is Rob Kruger. Happy shooting.